Today I'm going to talk about a little secret that nobody talks about our industry. Why our industry has such a bad rap. Why our industry is seen the way it's seen and not in a favorable way. And it all starts with realtors. All right, guys, this is Paco the Realtor, podcast number five. And today I'm going to talk about something that uh, I think is known by a lot of us in the industry who've been in it forever, um, who actually advocate um, for our industry and make sure that our industry thrives. Um, just a little background. I've been a broker for 23 years. I have been involved with the Inland Valley Association of Realtors for over 20 years. Um, Every realtor has to belong to a local association. Our association has got about 5,000 realtors. And uh, they're the ones that make sure that we have continued education. Um, if we have any ethics violation, um, we, they pay our due, we pay our dues to them. That kind of thing, right? Um, I've also been involved as a director with the California Association of Realtors. Um, we are the lobbyist group that uh, fights laws that um, affect homeowners or home buyers. Um, and there's always a bunch of them. Um, I'm also sit on a local PAC, LCRC, which is when politicians want money from local here in the Illinois Empire, they come to us for money. And we don't care about politics, uh, Democrat, I mean, I'm sorry, we don't care about parties, Democrat or Republican, conservative or liberal. We only want to know what you feel about property rights. Um, and I'm also the key uh, contact for a local assemblywoman and congressman. Um, so I go to Washington, D.C. once a year and talk to them about federal laws affecting uh, home ownership. So I am involved in battling laws and people who want to take away property rights or they want homeowners to pay more money. So just so you understand my background, other than being a full-time real estate broker for over 23 years. Okay. So that's where I come from. So. One of the things I realized early on is that not all realtors are created equal. Let's start with um, the whys. First of all, like in the industry, we have a lot of yahoos, a lot of people that should not be in the industry. Um, part of the problem is ease of entry. Um, if you study for a test, take the test, pass the test, you're licensed. Um, and it's memorization. That test has nothing to do with being practical. You could take the test tomorrow pass it and still have no clue what you're doing in this industry, just so you know. Um, second reason is uh, real estate brokers that will take anybody um, just in case you do a deal. Um, the way you have to understand this works is every agent works under a broker. I'm a broker. It is our responsibility to run the business. We cover, we have the e &O insurances, we have the liability insurance, we control the operations. Um, so they work under us. They're, they're independent contractors, but they work under us. We provide the training. Um, so when they do a transaction, it's under our brokerage. We, the transaction is under my company name. And then when the deal closes, I pay them a percentage of the commission based on what we had signed beforehand. So no agent can work by themselves. They got to work as part of a brokerage. And, um, and so if you put all this together, um, agents have a lot of flexibility since they're independent uh, contractors to do a lot of stuff. And brokers are not created equal either. Um, just because you work for a big broker doesn't mean the training is good. Just because you work for a small broker doesn't mean it's horrible. Um, the reality is, is because the ease of use to get into this industry is so easy that people find it very convenient to get their license and become a part-time agent. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a part-time agent as long as you still study and, and fight for your client. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Let me give you a stat that's going to blow you away. 80% of the business in real estate is done, 20, is done by 20% of real estate agents. Let me say that again. 80% of all real estate transactions of homes that are bought and sold are what are done by 20% of real estate agents. So that means the majority of real estate agents do not do enough business to support themselves 
we call them DNA agents. They do business um, with family and friends. Um, I have part-time real estate agents that work for myself and a lot of them are phenomenal. They fight for their clients. And that's part of my requirement is that you actually look out for your clients. Here's the problem. The problem is, is that um, most do not. Most, they are just chasing the commission. And the reason why they do this is, let me explain something. Let's say you buy or sell a house. Let's start with, let's say you sell a house. And um, you, you're selling your house and you sign the document that shows how much your agent's gonna get paid. Let's say the house is $700,000 and you do uh, f you know, 5% commission and then, you see, and then it's divided in half, buyer agent, seller agent. And you look at that and you're like, holy moly, look how much money you guys are making, right? And they think it's easy. So they get in and they're like, wow, if I do three extra deals a year, that's an extra, you know, potentially $30,000. Um, and this is why people join. They, they see the commissions, but they don't understand what happens behind the scenes. They don't understand what it takes to do a full time. Um, and so that's the first reason anybody can get into it. Second reason, the brokers, very low standards. Um, just be licensed, go under me and hopefully you do business. Uh, no accountability, no training, none of that. Um, and that creates a second challenge. So as an independent contractor, there's only so much we can do. I can have trainings every week, every month. Doesn't mean they're going to show up. I can require certain things. Doesn't mean they're going to do them. If I, if, if they don't do it, I have, I can just give them their license and leave and there'll be 10 brokers lining up to take them in. So there's no incentive for these agents. They want to stay, they want to be licensed, wait by the phone, wait for the phone to ring, be handed leads and just close deals and get paid. They don't want to work for it. That's 80% of our business. 80% of the business cannot survive this full time. They don't. And that's the problem. If 80% of the agents doing business are not full-time do less than three deals a year are not making this industry their livelihood mastering it the customer service is going to suck the legalities behind it are going to suck the communication is going to suck the problem solving is going to suck everything's going to suck everything and that's our problem. The problem is we are fighting the 20%, that 80% mentality. And up to this point, they've been able to get away with it for the following reason. As a buyer's agent, which the majority are, they get paid by the seller. So if I represent you as a buyer in a transaction, um, I bring you to an open house or a house and I make an offer for you and it gets accepted. The seller pays my commission as a buyer's agent. So as a buyer, you're going to let your cousin represent you because you're, it's not costing you anything. There's nothing coming out of pocket. There's nothing uh, invested. And so there's no risk on your part to hire your part-time cousin who does it part-time. There isn't. So our standards are so low because of that. Now, in the next few years, that is going to change. Uh, there's a lawsuit pending that they won, but it's been appealed. That state that sellers are no longer going to be required to pay uh, commission to buyer's agents. If this comes through in the next few years, all of a sudden, if I'm a buyer's agent, which by the way, the majority are, um, you who are buying a house are now going to have to pay your down payment, your closing costs, and you're going to have to pay me, your buyer's agent to represent you. So let me ask you a question. Do you think those buyers are going to think twice now about hiring an agent 
who has no who has no um, urgency or no uh, they don't make this their full-time business they're just doing it as a hobby all of a sudden, if I got to give you $10,000 to represent me, I'm going to think real hard about now whether I want you representing me or not. But up to this point, that hasn't been the case. And that, in essence, is the challenge we, we face, is that um, the bar is so low that anybody can get in this business with no experience that the outcome, the customer service, and the expertise is also set so low. Now, the good news for the 20% of us is that um, you stand out very easily among the 80% if you're actually an expert and you're actually an entrepreneur. Another way of knowing whether your realtor is the right one is, is this other than his full-time business? Is he an entrepreneur? In other words, does he treat it like a business? Or is he just chasing the commissions? Because like any other industry, you have your bad sales, your good salesman, your bad salesman, right? You have the ones that have the right intent and the ones that have the wrong intent. So one of the reasons why our industry has stayed this way, it's because of the California Association of Realtors, the National Association of Realtors. We're one of the, we're the largest lobbyist group, and I, and I would say we're a very important lobbyist group. But those part-timers still pay dues, and that dues go to the, the, both those, and we use that to fight for property rights. So that is important, but that's one of the main reasons why no changes have happened, is because they want those dues. Now, there was a time um, when Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, was in... I want to say it was Arnold, was governor of California, where we tried to change that, where we try to change the ease of access into our industry. Um, and um, it, he did not sign it or pass it because he thought that was a way to get people unemployed. In other words, he was all for employment and being licensed to them is employment. Um, so there was one time we fought that. Um, there has been some changes over time. I'm a, I'm a, college broker but when I became a broker in 2001 um, what it was 2003 I apologize um, what it was was that if you had your bachelor's degree and you took a few extra classes you could become a broker uh, now they've changed that you cannot no longer do that you have to have two years of full-time experience as an agent under a broker and the broker has to sign off for you to become a broker so at least they've changed that part of it um, but the ease of entry is still very, very simple because we all know someone. We all know someone who's licensed. That does not mean they're any good. That does not mean they're going to do the right for you. And that does not mean that that's the right agent for you. So now you know. Are they licensed? Or are they experts? Are they just licensed or is this their career? Are they licensed or are they, this is their true entrepreneurs. Are they licensed or are they someone who actually knows what they're doing and actually looks out for you? You want to ask all these questions. Now, you know.